Hey guys, so we've had a string of regionals in the first weekend with Power of the Elements being legal, so I wanted to do another top cut breakdown of the most played hand traps and staples since they were bound to change a lot with some new top tier decks in the mix. And before I continue as usual, a huge thanks to my sponsors, links down below for more information. So this video essentially included any topping deck profiles that were publicly available from the variety of regionals this past weekend and a huge thanks to Septa360 for compiling all of the information as usual and letting me use the data. Make sure to check his YouTube channel out and also follow him on Twitter to see all these deck profiles. So based on the lists that were available, which by the way the vast majority were from US regionals with a couple from Canada and Mexico, we had Sprite take the biggest pie with 17. Now keep in mind that not all top 8 deck profiles were available for each regional, so this pie chart is only based on lists that were publicly available, which means the actual meta pie chart could look a little bit different if we had all of the lists available. Branded Despia is still hanging on there, it is a great deck still, but I don't think it's at the same level as Sprite. Mathmech took a good chunk and this is with their new card in Power of the Elements that also gives them a really strong boost. Eldritch and Punk variants are reliable as ever and we do see some new meta contenders in Exo Sister and Tier Limits make it here as well, although not as big of a representation. Again, this may have to do with maybe some of these lists not being more available compared to other decks. There was even a Rika deck that topped as well and that was great and looks like there wasn't much Sword Soul this past weekend. If you're interested in checking out some of these deck profiles, again, go check out Septo360's Twitter for these spreadsheets. So as for the hand trap overview, the range was pretty wild being 0 to 18 hand traps in the main with a median of 10, which is higher than the 8 that was observed last month. A lot of people are running more hand traps because of Sprite and Tear entering the mix, but part of this also has to do with the fact that Sprite has room to play a ton of hand traps and they were the most represented, so they beefed these numbers up. As for the hand traps in the side, the median number was 3 which is lower than last month so I guess players were more prone to lining their hand traps in the main a lot more to have the best chance at winning game 1 whether they win or lose the die roll. As for going second board breaking cards, the median number in the main was 3 which was the same as last month and probably one of the most common cards in the main is Dark Ruler. As for the side, the median number is 7 now which is an increase from 5 from last month and it's usually around there so 7 is actually probably the highest I've seen for this category. Given that sprite board is pretty oppressive, there's not only an increase in players running Dark Ruler but also older board break cards like Sphere Mode and Lava Golem. So to cover the most played hand traps in the available topping list, as usual we have Ash Blossom coming in at number 1. Leading up to Power of the Elements, this was necessary with all the branded fusion stuff going on, but now with Sprite and Tier, this card continues to have relevant meta use against the top tier decks, although may not be enough. Everyone main decked this card except for one list that sided it. And number 2 is DD Crow, which has now moved up a lot in ranking since the last time. This has become a preliminary favorite hand trap of choice for many players, as it can be used to banish the mill tier to prevent the fusion from happening, or banish that Ronin to try to stop the toad plays in Sprite. Has strong application to other meta decks as well, other than Flunder, but best to have this card in the main like most players did at regionals. And number 3 is Infinite Impermanence, which is typically only a main deck card, although one list did side it. It is flexible and can be good against gigantic sprites since they normally bring out sprite red at most to prevent hand traps. Negating the time thief redoer or kit in tier elements ain't bad either, although given that sprite elf protects monsters that it points to from targeting, drawing it as a 6 card against sprite isn't that great. Next is in a way a surprise but Nibiru, with gigantic sprite locking both players to summoning level 2s, players predicted Nibiru will not be good for this format but a surprising number of lists, almost 2 thirds in fact, were actually main decking this card. Even against Sprite, if you do have this paired with another hand trap, it can actually be pretty deadly. Plus, with a lot of people this weekend that probably assumed Nibiru wouldn't be played this much, I'm sure some took that to their advantage to punish greedy plays. Then a card that has returned in popularity is Ghost Ogre, which initially stopped seeing play after Branded Despia came onto the scene. Back to popular again because it pretty much is deadly against Gigantic Sprite, not to mention we still do have a lot of Brave Token stuff going on. Popping the Flunder map with this is always nice as well, and this card was mostly main decked if played. Then we have Effect Failure which is still seeing play along with Imperm, and given that more players are running cross outs again, especially for Sprite, they sort of have to try and play at least one of this so that they have more coverage. It was main decked only in all of the lists that played this card. Next we have Cyframe Gear Gamma which I actually thought it would be higher than this. Gamma is really strong against Sprite right now because if you can do this on their normal summon effect then that might just end things for them. Not to mention Gamma is a level 2 so if you're playing Sprite and can resolve this on your turn then that's just extra good news. There was a split in maining or siding this card among the available list. 
Then we have Droll, which recently was climbing up in popularity, but looks like it has fallen back down, and it was only a side deck card if played at all. I think it's still a good hand trap, but there are just so many things that we have to play right now, and I think DD Crow basically took over that available spot over Droll for a lot of people. Next we have Token Collector, which still made it to top 10 despite the fall of Sword Soul, at least for now. Still applicable against Brave Token shenanigans, but probably too niche of a hand trap at the moment. It was only side decked in the list that ran it. Then lastly, we have Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, which has been talked about among some players as a potential choice to combat against Sprite and Tears, and not sure how successful this card is, but if it's especially for the mirror, then you already have the cards ready to get rid of from your opponent's deck. So let's cover the top 15 most played side deck staples, and starting at number 1, to probably no surprise, we have Dark Ruler no more. An absolute must against Sprite, and also against Tear as well to go up against Winda and Dragos Tapelia. It's a great card and allows you to fight back. There are formats where this isn't so great, such as when Scythlock was very common with DPE, but right now this card is perfect. Given that almost all of the lists included were going first decks, it really says something when almost half of them are still main decking this card. Next is Call by the Grave, which for the most part is purely a main deck card. Really strong right now because not only does it stop hand traps, it's detrimental against tears as you move that tier monster from Grave, or maybe you can banish that sprite's toad as well, not to mention Scythe if people try to lock you. A lot of calls to get this ban now because it makes tier 1 decks stronger than they already are, while others feel it should come back to 3 to make rogue decks more playable. Then we have Harpy's Feather Duster, which is just a blowout card with no restrictions. Nothing more to say about this other than the fact that it's probably in a lot of people's list, although some may prefer to have more quick play form of removal. Speaking of quick play, we then have the best back row stopper of them all in Red Reboot, which is a must if your deck can OTK, or even if you can't, if you can at least make something like Zeus after rebooting, then that works as well. Probably in the hot seat for a potential ban as well, since if you're a trap deck, then you're probably dying and can't do anything if you get this slapped on you. I do love Reboot though, and certainly miss it at 3. Next is another board break card that's been very popular in the last few months, an evenly matched. Purely a sided card if played, but really is one of the best at clearing boards and banishing things face down is really strong. With a lot of boards ending on monsters in defense mode, and not to mention paired with some back row, this card has become favorable than Lightning Storm for many. Then we have a busted card in Dimensional Barrier which can still stop the new top strategy by calling Xyz on Sprite, or Exo Sisters and Fusion on Tears, not to mention the already existing top decks like Branded Despi and Sword Soul, which still get hit hard by this card. Not seeing as much play as before when Despia first entered the scene, but still a great going first side option since it doesn't matter if they try to feather Dester the card away. Next we have Lightning Storm, which is still a strong card and can hit back row or attack position monsters. As I mentioned earlier, looks like Evenly Match is a preferable choice for this format, but this card will always remain popular and may be better for your deck if you can't rely on giving up your battle phase. Then we have another back removal in Cosmic Cyclone. Interesting that the quick play back removal isn't as played much this past weekend, perhaps because the new top decks in Sprite and Tier don't have to worry too much about anti-spell fragments. Still, being able to banish a card is nice, especially now that Tier back row will trigger if they're sent to grave by card effects. Next we have Crossout Designator, which typically don't make it to these top lists, but has become very popular recently, particularly in Sprite to combat off hand traps on their normal summon or their gigantic sprite. It's also a good card when there's a lot of mirror matches going on with the top deck and is a good card to have. A similar card to cross out is Talents, which is another option played as a pseudo call by the grave as when you're hand trapped you can try to draw a couple more or if you already have enough gas then you can see your opponent's hand and try to spin away a card such as another hand trap that could stop you. Really strong card this format and was main decked only if it was played at all. Then we have another quick play back removal in Twin Twisters, which is a lot more popular than Cosmic Cycle in last format, but perhaps that's changed a bit now. It was only side decked as well if it was played. Related to the lower use of quick play back removal, we have Anti-Spell Fragrance, which in the last format was ranked much higher. As mentioned earlier, Sprite and Tears are actually pretty okay against Anti-Spell, so maybe players opted to go with something else in anticipation of the first weekend of the new format. Next we have Droplets, which last format was actually more popular than Dark Ruler, but now with the emergence of the new top decks from Pote, guess it's taken a bit of a backseat. Still a great card and may even need to play this alongside of Dark Ruler just to get past those resilient boards. Then we have Solemn Judgment, which seems to be a favorite choice among sprite players to negate Dark Ruler, the other option being opponent of the Red Lotus. It pretty much stops everything, so not surprising to see this card make it to the list, although it was purely a side deck card if played. And last in the top 15 spot is Super Polymerization, which actually purely saw main deck play. Of course, Branded Despia is going to be playing this, but I saw at least one sprite build main deck this card as well. With the release of Garura and the power of the elements, Super Polling opponents just got a little bit more easier, so it's something to watch out for. Alright guys, so that was it for a breakdown of the topping deck list at Regionals post Power of the Elements. Hopefully this was helpful in adjusting your hand trap lineup moving forward. 
As always, a big thanks to my Patreons, Eileen Dice Queen, Bolt Spider, Cybernetic, Brandon Jaren, Bear Lord, Spooky Boogie, and Stephen Phillips, as always, for supporting the channel. You guys are amazing. If you're interested in joining my Patreon, links down below. Take care, guys.